I think the Iraq war was about oil, absolutely. One of the members of the British cabinet said at one point, do you think we would invade if they exported carrots? I believe most Americans understand that our dependence on petroleum is a source of vulnerability for this country. It invites attack, it invites terrorism, it's a threat to our well-being. To meet our growing demand for gasoline, America now imports about a million barrels of refined gasoline every day. He understands he has to offer Americans some sign, some evidence that he's aware of this concern and is doing something about it. Well, the thing that he has offered is drilling an Anwar. To make America less dependent, Congress needs to pass a pro-growth, pro-jobs, pro-environment pro development of Anwar. It makes sense. Well, it's an outright lie. Using the, the Department of Energy statistics, we have to import so much more oil each year, and Anwar has so little, that each year, despite Anwar, we'll still be increasing our dependence on foreign oil. Our long-term outlook uh, has a an increase in oil demand in this country over the next 20 years of about 8 million barrels a day. Almost all of that oil will have to be imported. We use more than 20 million barrels of oil a day in the United States. By 2025, we will increase our daily consumption by 8 million barrels, according to the Department of Energy. Ninety percent of that increase will need to be imported, despite drilling in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. If you look at the Department of Energy's figures on where that oil is going to come from, more and more of it is going to come from unstable, divided, fractious, terrorist-ridden areas of the world. The Persian Gulf, West Africa and North Africa, the Andean region of Latin America, and Central Asia. The more we go into those areas, the more resistance we're going to face and the more risk that American troops will have to be sent over there to protect the flow of oil, to protect the refineries, the pipelines, and the sea routes that carry the oil. And that's exactly what's happening under the Bush administration. We are turning the military into a global military protection service, and more and more of our troops are in very risky places uh, putting their life on the line to protect the flow of oil to fill up American cars. And inevitably there will be a loss of life, and the more dependent we become on this foreign oil, the greater the price in blood that we're going to have to pay to keep maintaining our existing oil dependency. In pursuit of extracting oil as cheaply as possible for consumption largely by Western nations, oil development has devastated environments in many locations around the globe. Ecuador is one example. In 1964, Texaco began drilling for oil in the northern region of the Ecuadorian Amazon. During the period from 1964 to 1992, Texaco extracted more than one billion gallons of oil from what was, prior to the oil exploration, a pristine rainforest.
Texaco's going into Ecuador is a classic example of a giant, powerful oil company entering an environment in a country where the government had no idea how to regulate and what to do. When Texaco entered Ecuador in the mid-1960s, Ecuador had never drilled for oil. Texaco was the first company to come in and develop oil drilling infrastructure. Their executives made what turned out to be a very fateful decision. They decided to use practices that they were not using in the United States that were substandard compared to what was being used industry-wide at that time around the world. One is they decided to dump toxic water formation directly into the rainforest environment instead of re-injecting it thousands of feet underground like they were doing at that point in other countries. When crude oil is taken out of the ground, it has two parts. One is the marketable crude that goes to the refinery and onto the commercial market. The other is waste product. It's toxic water that contains 2% crude and some of the most harmful carcinogens known to man. Of the 18 billion gallons of toxic wastewater dumped, if you just take the 2% of toxic wastewater that's pure crude, you have an amount of crude dumped that's 30 times larger than the Exxon Valdez spill. If you also include the other 98% of the wastewater, which contains carcinogens, you have an oil disaster the likes of which this world has never seen before. And what's so disturbing about what happened in Ecuador is that this was done deliberately to save money. El pueblo Achara está muy preocupado por todos esos daños causados por la Texas y por otras empresas petroleras. Porque esto, esos daños que han causado es un daño in, eh, irreparable. Y no tiene cómo volver a dejar como antes. Con todos esos daños, esos daños han quedado para los pueblos indígenas. You know, you can see literally hundreds of open air toxic waste pits filled with like this oil sludge that dot the landscape and these leach into the groundwater. And the groundwater is the source of drinking water for the region. There are thousands of people right now who, because of what Texaco did in Ecuador, are living in a cancer zone where every day they are forced to drink contaminated water just to survive. Thousands of people are being exposed daily to carcinogens. Thousands of people are at risk of contracting cancer. Many of them already have cancer. Many of them have passed away. And if this is not cleaned up soon, I believe, as do many medical observers, that in the next decade we will see countless numbers of innocent people perish, including children. <laughs>